Okay guys, this is a quick and dirty video. Uh, right here is uh, my Ryobi light bulb adapter. This is a 3D printed part that allows you to connect a 18 volt light bulb directly to a Ryobi battery. You just pop it right on top. And what I'm trying to show here is how you actually put the conductors in. So this is a 3D printed part, and then for um, the post-processing, what you have to do after you 3D print it is put some nickel strips in. Uh, this is four millimeter wide nickel strip, and it's the conductor between the battery and the light bulb. It's kind of a ribbon, it's uh, very flexible, it's pretty easy to work with. Um, it, it's kind of hard to describe how it goes in, but basically there's slots already in the 3D print and you just kind of wiggle back and forth uh, the strip through there so that the shape of the 3D print holds the ribbon in place. It has it, these little bumps that go directly to the uh, terminals on the battery. And then for the light bulb, little bump right in the middle for the tip of the light bulb and then uh, some of the material on the side for the side of the light bulb. Now I'm also kind of afraid that my big fat fingers are going to uh, block the view here. So I do have a 3D print which uh, this was actually a failed print. It failed uh, printing about halfway through but I thought it might be kind of cool as sort of like an x-ray view of the 3D print. So a couple of things you can see here. One is that uh, essentially it's hollow. You know, I don't have any fill in any of these areas. Uh, the reason why I print it basically hollow is it does save a little bit of plastic and a little bit of print time, but it kind of gives it a little bit of a natural flexibility, uh, which is a, a good thing. Like for example, I found that with light bulbs, Believe it or not, the exact size of the threads isn't standard. Uh, just from one manufacturer to another, it varies a little bit. And so by having this be hollow, it gives it a little bit more flexibility. And if your light bulb does not thread well in here, uh, just warm it up for maybe 10 seconds with a hairdryer and then thread the light bulb in and the uh, threads here will just form right up to the threads on the light bulb. So with the cutaway view here, I thought it would be a little easier too for me to get the material in and you to see what I'm doing um, without my fat fingers getting in the way. So the way that I usually do these uh, when I'm putting them together is I start with the the bit that's in the middle here, the tip of the light bulb. And the way that I do that is, I see the two holes here. The one just kind of goes to a little bit of a, a dead end. Um, so also, you want to start with uh, just cutting your pieces of nickel strip. And I forgot to get out my tape. Oh, there's my ruler. Um, so I usually cut these pieces here to about seven centimeters or, yeah. Two and a half inches or so, um, just roughly. Uh, it's just got to be long enough to complete the circuit, but you don't want it so long that there's extra material you're weaving through and it actually gets in your way. So what I'm going to do here, push it through the hole. This is going to be fun for focusing too. <laughs> Autofocus never focuses exactly where you want it to. So I'll push it through that hole and then on the battery side of things, just fold down that end into kind of that little pocket right there. And then hold that in place and then take the other end, fold it around and push it down 
through the other hole. This is kind of challenging for me to do uh, looking at the part and looking at the camera at the same time. So if you're actually only doing the one thing, it's a little easier. So we're just kind of weaving it back through like that. So it's over here, it's down through here, loops over that hump, comes back. Now I'm going to take my finger, hold in place over that bump, maybe give like a little bit of a curl to the tip here, and then it's going to go down and out the little slot in the side, the, uh, the bulb side most slot there. Okay, and then just pull it through. Um, I forgot to mention, if you have any kind of stringing um, on your 3D print, sometimes you get like a little tiny bit of stringing through the slot. What you can do is before you start, just take a, a piece of the nickel strip, just kind of push straight through. Uh, the other thing is sometimes when you cut your nickel strips, um, just uh, with a scissors, sometimes cutting them with a the scissors um, will actually like twist the end a little bit. So just make sure the ends are flat. Um, sometimes what can help with that is like a plain small needle nose pliers just flatten the end out. So we were on this side, we went through, looped it, brought it back out, out through the side. And essentially what I do is um, whatever I just did, I hold that next. So since we just went through here, I just put my finger here that way. Now, no matter what I do here, all the rest of it stays in place. Now there's the next slot above. So we take this, bend it, push it through. And this is where, you know, giving it a little curve up can help. Uh, or sometimes if your finger's a little bit big, using a very small needle nose pliers makes it easy to to grab and pull. And you just want all that material through. Then pull it up, take up the slack. So now we're on the inside and this bump, that's what actually connects to the, uh, the battery terminal. So again, we're going to fold this around, go back out through that slot. So all this really is, is a serpentine pattern, you know, down, up, through, back, around, back through. And then there's kind of a little pocket right here. So what I do is pull that snug fold it over and you kind of will almost get like a little crease right there you can see where the end of the pocket is and then just cut it right there so what that extra material does is it just it gives you something to hold on and pull because otherwise how would you do this you know um, so you just let the piece be a little bit long but if it went out to like here you know it'd be so long it'd be kind of a hassle to handle so anyways just push that down pull that up snip it with the scissors and then push that down into the pocket that way there's no um, no sharp edges sticking up or anything like that and then you could take your pliers or a pencil or something like that and just uh, push that edge down in there so that's one of the two strips that goes to the tip of the light bulb now for the other side here We'll take another piece of the nickel strip and start it by, um, we see we see kind of a number, number of slots here, but kind of this middle bit, um, it doesn't really go through, it goes kind of crosswise. So you can take your nickel strip, you put it in here and push it that way slides right through 
see how that's sort of a it's sort of a, a lengthwise tunnel basically and then up here we're doing basically the same thing as we did on the other side just make sure there's enough material sticking off both ends in this case send this through that first slot This is so much easier for me to just to do than to try to do and show. <laughs> Some of this I'm doing left-handed instead of right-handed to show it better too. So through, and then again, this hump, just like the one on the other side, this is where the actual battery connection is made. So now I hold that in place, take that side, push it through, just take up the slack, just kind of pull on it a little, and then just push it down. And now what I'm going to do is just snip off the extra, and push that in there. Where'd my pencil go? And then just kind of push down the extra here. So that's the battery side. Now we'll go back to the bulb side. And if we look here, um, kind of right where this comes out, there's a slot that goes all the way through. And then over a little bit, there's also a slot that goes all the way through. And there's actually two different ways we could do this. We could take uh, our nickel strip and fold it down into this first slot, bring it up, go out that second slot, and then kind of fold it back over. That gives you a really, really nice secure um, way of holding the nickel strip, but I've also found it's just uh, kind of difficult to uh, make that first bend and get it all the way through. So the way I usually do it is I just, I go to the second here and push it through. I'll just pull it enough to take up the slack. And then with it sticking up like that, um, I would be able to very easily fold it over and just have it come down the side of the threads here but that's probably a little bit long. You don't want it so long when it's folded in that it gets anywhere near the tip. You know, you definitely want the tip and the side completely separate from each other. And see like on this light bulb, there's this nice plastic insulator between the tip and the side, but they're not all spaced as well as that. Uh, and because this is so low current, you actually don't need a whole lot of contact here. So what I usually do is I cut this just a little um, past the edge. You know, maybe something like that. It doesn't have to be a ton. Something like that, and then I just fold it over and squeeze it in. So now we've got the tip of the light bulb and the side of the light bulb. And if you want to go a little further, you can like really press that in, get it to take the shape of the threads here. So when you do it like this, the one end is loose, but I found that, you know, the first time that you screw a light bulb into this, it, uh, it really shapes to the threads nicely and it's not flopping around or anything. So like I said, you know, right here, there's kind of two different ways you could do it. I mean, there's two slots, um, but you don't need a whole lot of surface area on that. You know, like at the tip, it's, it's not a whole lot. Um, the nickel strip is 100% real nickel. Um, it, uh, it conducts well, and it's uh, low current with one of these LED bulbs. So now for the last step, what I do is I put this on the battery. So, you know, up and down like this. And then I take a hairdryer 
and I just point warm air at this for uh, 10, 12 seconds, and then thread the light bulb right into it. So like right now, now this one is open, but still, if I try threading the light bulb in, mm, it feels pretty snug. Uh, depending on the light bulb that you use, if it feels too snug, don't go crazy and tighten the whole thing in real hard because you can actually crack it. It's just plastic, right? But if you just warm it up a little bit, even if your light bulb is a little bit on the big side, it'll just form to the threads just perfect. So now we can see here, there's our conductor on the side. And as we thread the light bulb in, the side is going to touch that. And then once we thread in far enough, the tip is going to touch the conductor right there. So if this was already on the battery, uh, when we get down to that tip, the light will come on, which again is a great indicator that, hey, everything is working right. Uh, the other thing is I do recommend get yourself uh, some good light bulbs. I've experimented with a number of different light bulbs. Most 12 volt LED bulbs will run fine off the Ryobi 18 volt pack, um, but some of them are better designed than others, what actual electronics are on the inside and all. Uh, this is the brand that I found that I've really liked the most. It's Lemang. Uh, this is marked as a 12 volt, 7 watt uh, battery, uh, 2700 Kelvin color temperature. So it's a warm color, which I really like. You know, uh, camping, emergency preparedness, that warmer color is really nice. Um, I've also measured it that um, running on the 18 volt battery, it's usually drawing uh, 6 watts. Uh, 300 milliamp so however big your battery is you can basically multiply that by more than three to figure out how many hours so like a four amp hour battery will run this light bulb for about 13 hours on a full charge and of course if you're like any other uh, uh, power tool homeowner you probably have more than one battery um, so this brand is a good one Lemang these are actually designed for anywhere from 10 to 30 volts. So these are designed for like solar systems, for example, whether you had a 12 or 24 volt uh, off-grid solar system, uh, you can run these right off your main battery pack. So I hope that helps you out in terms of how to actually weave uh, the nickel strip through the 3D print to make this work. Um, I think the 3D print here worked pretty well in terms of uh, having this cutaway view make it hopefully that made it a little easier for you um, and then like right here if this is sticking out a little bit it doesn't matter it doesn't affect it but put my finger here just bend that down into place um, a real small plain uh, needle nose pliers can also be handy working on this um, but that's it and this video is way too long if I was actually just doing this myself to make one it takes like two minutes. <laughs> uh, but the first time you do it, it'll take a little bit longer. Um, again, this was my invention. Um, I got a little bit of help with the actual modeling from somebody else, um, and we have it posted. So you can use it for your own personal use. Uh, hope you enjoy it. Have a good time with your Ryobi emergency LED lighting.